Hi everybody, in this fun coding exercise, we're gonna learn how to take a collection of values and turn them into an alphabetized ordered collection of values. So here's an example where you can see that I have a bunch of names listed here on the left-hand side. These are actually names from the popular TV show, Game of Thrones. They're not currently in any specific order, it's just random. And the output, what we see on the right-hand side is these same names are now arranged alphabetically by first name. And we're gonna take a look at how to pull all of this off. The magical ingredient to pulling this off is the sort method that lives on our array object. Now here's the thing, with strings, with text, there are many ways we can sort it. We can come up with our own ways of sorting it as well, but why go through all the extra hassle when a built-in method like array.sort will solve it for us? And some details to call out, what has a default sorting behavior, we can provide a comparison function to help array.sort sort the values in exactly the way we want to. And we will look into that partly because the default behavior will get the job done, but I think it's important for you and I to also know how to specify a custom sorting capability in case the data we're dealing with isn't quite as clean as we would like it. Now, to learn all about arrays and to go in much greater detail, I've actually written a lot of content about it, so you can just head on over to the website, link below to learn about arrays. There's a little book I wrote called Arrays from Noob to Ninja that goes into more detail. So I'm not gonna go into the details of arrays as normally I would, but I'm gonna keep it more at a very high level and go really fast on focusing on just the sort capabilities instead. So the key to the sort capability is the comparison function. And the way it works is this. Let's say we're comparing two items, A and B. Our comparison function will return either a negative one, one, or zero. And this comparison function is what we pass in to our sort method. So it's a little bit important that we know this because when you get negative one, one, or zero, here's what it means. Negative one means the first value will appear ahead of the second value. So I'm comparing A and B. A will be the first value, B will be the second one. If the comparison function returns a value of one, it means the first value will appear after the second value. So my two items, it'll be B first, then A. And if the value is zero, it means both values are equal. Don't change the order of them. And this seems a little abstract. It's like, why am I comparing A and B when I might have like 20, 30, or 40 items? That's the magic of the JavaScript runtime and how it handles it. The main thing to note is that our comparison needs to make sure that if two values are provided, we have some logic on which value is first, which value is last, and what exactly goes into pulling that off. So we're gonna go ahead and get into some coding. And one thing I wanna quickly highlight is the example I came up with here in terms of like what arrays and what the values need to be, I could read it myself, but instead I asked, you know, in this case, Bard, but you can use ChatGPT as well, to give me the array. So I'm gonna go ahead and use the array that have already been generated for me, just as a way of like simplifying something that would be otherwise kind of painful and boring. All right, so here I am in VS Code, and you can see that I have a blank HTML document, nothing too exciting going on here. So the first thing I'm gonna do is add a script element, and I'm gonna go ahead and paste in the value of the names of the arrays. And so go ahead and here's my array called Game of Thrones Characters, and you can see the values of the, the characters actually being provided here. You can use whatever name you want. You can use whatever name of arrays that you want. Uh, as long as you have some level of strings or text that you can arrange in an alphabetical order, you're fine. You can use like A, B, C, D, but just not in that order because that would mean it'd be automatically alphabetized. So what I'm gonna do next is create a function, a compare values function. That's gonna be a comparison function. Function, compare values. And you're gonna take two arguments, A, and B, uh, just like the example we talked about earlier. And what I'm gonna specify first is if A is less than B, you know, imagine A could be, in this case, Bran Stark, and B is Rob Stark. If A is less than B, what this really means is that return negative one. What this really means is that A is less than B. Now, this, kind of, this commenting is kind of self-explanatory, but you'll see why in a little bit. Else, if A is greater than B, I'm gonna go ahead and if A is greater than B, well, sorry, return a one. And then lastly, if they're both equal, which means that it's just a value of zero, A and B are equal, return a zero. All right, and so now all that remains is for me to call our sort capability and make it work. So I'm gonna create a new variable called sort of names and it equals game of thrones characters dot sort and I'm passing in our comparison function that's gonna be provided here. And then we will go console.log and sorted names. All right. And so I'm just gonna run this example. 
All right, so here I have my example. Of course, it's a blank page, nothing to show here. And let me zoom in a bit so you can see more. You can see I see array. I can now see Arya Stark, Bronn Stark, Cersei, all the names listed in alphabetical order, exactly the way we want it. Let me go back to VS Code here. Now, what if I wanted all of my values to be alphabetical, but in reverse? I don't exactly specify how it needs to be. All I need to do is just swap the signs around. I'm going to remove the comments so that way we're not having to make them all be consistent. And if I do this and go back to my example, refresh the page, you can now see that the values are displayed in reverse alphabetical order. You see Tyrion first and Arya Stark last. Now, the thing about the compare values that makes it interesting is not just that you can adjust the this direction of it. Let's say that my actual objects or, or my array isn't just first name and last name displayed like this, but it's actually a collection of objects instead. So I'm going to replace it right now. So again, I use my handy AI assistant to help me here, but notice now that we have the same level of characters, but it's not first name, you know, our array is a collection of objects, first name and last name are the properties, then I have values here. If I want to now figure out how to sort them, the difference is going to be, let me go back and just change it to A less than B and A greater than B. What is being passed into A and B are the actual values from the array itself, so the actual objects themselves. And A less than B here is going to be an object comparing an object, so it makes sense. So I'm going to do A dot first name equals less than B dot first name. And so I'm going to just copy this string so it makes it more easy. I'm going to paste this multiple times here. And then the else case is still the else case. And so if I were to now run my code, the end result will be a collection of objects. But you can now see that the objects themselves are sorted in alphabetical order. And just for good measure, let's say I want to sort by last name. I can just change my first name in the compares, comparison function to be last name. And if I go back to my code and I refresh it, you can now see that in this case, the last names are in alphabetical order, Baelish, Baratheon, Bolton, Greyjoy, and all of that. And so with that, we saw a very quick overview of the comparison function and how we can use that with our array sort method to be able to alphabetize our names in forward order, reverse order, or if our data type that we're actually sorting against is more complex, like the object we saw earlier with the first name property and the last name property, our comparison function allows us the flexibility of diving into the object, unpacking the value we care about, and making sure we use that as the basis for comparison. So with that, if you have any questions, post in the forums where I and others will be happy to help you out. Subscribe to the newsletter where on a regular basis in your inbox, you'll find some interesting things that I'm fiddling with that are entertaining and fun and informative for email consumption. So just the right amount of content. Follow me at Karupa on Twitter, on Facebook, and many other social networks that are relevant at this time where I am at Karupa. You know, there could be other Karupas who take over some of these handles. So be sure you're following the real me. That we usually You can tell by the style of the profile picture and things like that. And lastly, check out my books. I tend to write a lot of content and some of it makes its way into book form, both in paperback and Kindle edition. Links in my books below. So check those out. And with that, I will see you all next time.